Hey Magical Sparks, it's Sparkle here and today we're going to be doing something really special and magical. So today we're going to be taking this magic outside of my sketchbook and bringing it to a new piece of paper. And now with the paper ready, it's time to prepare the rest of our art supplies. So it's starting it off, I'm going to be using this Pilot Color Eno Mechanical Pencil in the color purple to start off the sketching. So as you might have already seen by the title and the thumbnail, in today's video we're going to be trying to draw and create a full illustration using only purple art supplies. I know, doesn't that sound so magical? So this challenge is definitely not my own idea and definitely full credits go to the original creators of this idea but it is a trend that I've been seeing on YouTube where different artists try to create a full drawing using only purple art supplies. Some artists have gone ahead and used all their purple markers, others have gone ahead and used all their purple art supplies. With me, I really was not able to go ahead and get all my purple art supplies out because that just would have been a lot of work. So today we're just going to be using art supplies that are purple. So as always, today we're starting it off with the sketching and today I thought I would show you guys as much of my sketching process as I could film because I feel like sometimes the sketching process is just so underrated and especially for today, I did not have any kind of idea going into this video, I didn't have any kind of concept in my mind and everything that I'm drawing right now, I just kind of came up with it on the spot while I was recording so. So do you realize what that means? Like you guys will be able to watch me create this piece from from scratch from like no ideas you'll be able to watch me gradually get ideas and put them together in this illustration to create the final piece Now usually when I'm drawing, I like to have music playing in the background or I like to be watching something but today I decided to switch off from all technology and only have my phone in the room which I used for filming and today, like not today, but when I filmed this drawing, it was so peaceful for me and I really just got immersed into this entire piece. I really just put myself there and I was very much in love with what I was creating. So the color purple, what kind of color is purple? It's so rare to find in nature, yet it's so beautiful and elegant. It has this sense of calmness and peacefulness about it, yet also this sense of darkness and mystery. It's such a fascinating color and it also happens to be one of my favorite colors. Specifically for me, I like the color light purple, but today we're going to be using all purples. And for this drawing, it was kind of subconsciously influenced by a show I've been watching and I just finished called Shadow and Bone, which I realized once I had drawn the antlers how much it was influenced by that but also this was just influenced by me and how I see magic and just how much I associate that element of magic with the color purple so for this drawing I decided to draw this princess and trantress type character with like this beautiful jewelry and like a really mysterious component about her she's got like a really happy face but there seems to be magic to her and she has like a different kind of story in the background again and all of this was happening on the spot. I had no ideas in my mind. I just started drawing and all these ideas started coming to me. I feel like sometimes we all just say that we don't have ideas of what to draw, that we feel stuck and that we can't find inspiration but the truth is that inspiration is always all around us and we just have to know how to look, we just have to be able to look in the right way. Like for me for example, I never thought that just thinking of a color and giving myself the prompt of using a specific color would lead me to create such a detailed drawing.
But of course, there were some bumps along the way, and there was a lot of erasing and redrawing and resketching. But that is part of the process, and that is part of being an artist and drawing and learning. So I did actually enjoy it because it was a part of me and my art journey. And if I'm being completely honest, this drawing is probably my favorite drawing that I've made in my entire life till this point. There's just something about it that I can just connect to, connect with, and I feel like a part of me is just with this drawing, like the happy part of me, the part that. Loves magic and I can just feel that connection like I can feel a connection that I haven't felt with any of my drawings and I was very much in the zone when I created this drawing now this video is definitely more on the calm side compared to my other drawings but that's just how this entire piece made me feel and looking back at this drawing that's just how i'm feeling right now as well i feel really calm and peaceful and i just feel that sense of calmness and inner peace and it just feels really nice and i hope this drawing might help you guys find that peace as well Something else I've also been doing recently is experimenting with my art style and how I go about drawing eyes and noses and mouths and just pretty much the entire positioning of the face. So if my art style does look a bit different in this video, that's why. But you know what? That's completely okay. It's part of learning, it's part of growth, and it's part of my art journey. And of course, I am allowed to switch between art styles. I'm allowed to do what makes me happy. But right now, I'm kind of liking this art style, so I'm just going ahead and embracing it. So when it came to outlining, I decided to use my Statler Tri Plus Fine Liner. The cap did have a purple color on it and the marker, I mean the fine liner did kind of look like a purple. But for some reason on camera, it looks a little bit more pinkish, but trust me guys, it is purple. I'm not gonna lie though, this drawing was definitely my favorite that I've made so far and not just because of how it turned out but because of how it made me feel and how it continues to make me feel. I just really enjoyed making this drawing and I feel like some of us sometimes we just forget how magical art can be when we're under pressure especially like the pressure of having to post on social media and just knowing you have to create something that looks perfect every time or the pressure that you put on yourself when you compare yourself to other artists and think that you have to do what they do or do better than them. I feel like sometimes it's just really nice to escape from all that pressure and just forget about it and draw something because you like it, because it makes you feel happy, because it gives you that sense of fulfillment. So for all the wonderful people who have been watching my shorts channel and are subscribed, firstly, thank you very much. And secondly, you may have noticed in one of my recent um, videos that I posted that I talked about how I finally chosen to forget about the pressure that social media is putting on me and that the fact that I'm posting my drawings on YouTube is putting on me because I have noticed that in the past couple of months, especially since my subscriber count has grown and I've gotten more support, while I am really thankful and grateful for that, I also noticed that my my art was being influenced by it. Like, yes, it was good in the sense that I felt this urge to improve and I felt motivated to keep practicing and keep drawing to improve. But at the same time, it was also kind of negative because it wasn't social media's fault. It's definitely my fault, but I just put this pressure on myself that every time I make a new drawing because I'm going to be posting it or showing it in a sketchbook tour, that I have to create something beautiful and wonderful and better than the last thing I created. And that is probably why I sometimes, even though I had like half an hour time to draw at the end of the day, I just didn't pick up my sketchbook because I felt like if I wanted to create something perfect, I needed at least one hour of time to draw and I just felt like this pressure coming on me. I started to draw less in my sketchbook. I started to kind of be more frustrated with my art and I just wasn't really, uh, I guess, satisfied with where I was going. And it took me a while to realize, but once I did realize, I felt so much more happy. And I realized that I don't need to be perfect. Just because I'm posting my art online doesn't mean every single drawing needs to be perfect. In fact, all my drawings can be imperfectly perfect. And that's the specific line I believe I used in my shorts video. And I just, like, once I realized that, I just felt so much more free. And I kind of allowed myself to be a kid again and to draw whatever I wanted without forcing myself to make it look perfect or beautiful. Because in the 
the end, if people like my art, they can like me for being myself. I don't have to be someone I'm not. I don't have to be this perfect, amazing person. Instead of that, I can just be my perfect, amazing self. <laughs> but anyways, let's bring it back to the main point I was trying to make, which is that art can really make you feel magical. Art can actually help you feel that sense of happiness and joy. And it really just comes down to your perspective as well. And once I managed to change my perspective and put myself less under the pressure of what others might think, I really just found myself enjoying the process and that's really just what happened with this drawing. I realized that I can draw whatever I wanted and with this drawing, I'm really not worried about what anyone else might say, what anyone else might think. I really don't mind if someone's gonna hate this drawing or if they're gonna say, oh no, it's ugly or something. I really, really don't mind. You can share your opinion, that's fine, but it's not gonna affect me because I had fun making this drawing. I loved how it turned out and that's what's important to me. With that being said though, I'm not saying that I'm not willing to improve and to learn of course I am and I'm always always ready to take on constructive criticism but, but at the same time I'm definitely going to try my best to be a child again and not let any kind of pressure from the outside world negatively influence my art and how it makes me feel because for me art is very special to me and I'm gonna make sure that I'm able to hold on to that special connection that I have with art And now more about this drawing, so when I was coloring, I decided to give the character a medium kind of purple tone as in I didn't want it to be too light or too dark because my idea, like the idea I had in mind, was that I wanted to keep the skin color like in between and then for the different features like her dress, the little magical line flowing in the background and the antlers to be a mixture of light and dark variations of the color purple. So for the antlers and the crown, I decided to go with a dark purple as well as with the dress and then for everything else. I decided to make it light except for the magical blob in the background I did experiment with different colors and in the end I kind of found a color that I think suits the illustration well but more on that later Another thing I was trying to be careful about was the type of purples I used. So as you guys might know, purple is a mix of red and blue in the color wheel. And, and the thing is, while I did have a lot of markers available to me to use, I was really careful because there are certain purple colors that are more towards the pinkish side and there are more purple colors that are more towards the bluish side or like the more um, indigo kind of side. And I was trying to be careful because I didn't want to end up using too many different kind of um, hues of purple because I feel like if I did, the drawing would have been a lot less cohesive or maybe that's just what I'm thinking. So that's why I was trying to be careful in the colors I used. And for most of the parts of the drawing, I tried to repeat the same kind of colors here and there just so I could bring the drawing just a bit more closer together and make it just a little bit more cohesive. You know what? I discovered two things while I was doing this art challenge. The first thing I discovered was that I do not know how to draw hands. And I know you guys are probably looking at the hand that I drew after I said that. So you know what? Stop looking at it. I can. I, I know you're still looking at it. Stop, please. <laughs> it does not look good. And you know what? Um, that's my fault. I should have used a reference and I should have practiced a bit more. But um, oh well, I'll try and do better next time. But the second thing I also learned was that these purple markers, like the Yuhu purple markers, have such like different names. Like I've seen color names on the marker caps that I've never ever heard before in my life. And that was kind of fun for me just to like pick up a marker and just like read the name on the back and realize how I just have never heard of it before. I don't know, it was kind of fun. Alright, and now coming back to what I was talking about before, as you can see for the shading of the dress, I pretty much used the same colors that I used for the antlers as well as just like one extra color just to add that shininess to the dress. But everything else is pretty much the same and again, the reason why I did that is just for that cohesiveness and just to make sure that the drawing is able to be unified and in harmony. And with that, now it's time to color in the hair. And I will say that the way I color hair has changed a lot since, um, I guess, how it used to be. 
and it does change a lot with each drawing that I make like with this drawing I tried to make it like a bit more um, blended and smoother but also kind of like semi-realistic in a way and like I said it just changes with every drawing that I make and I've actually noticed something so approximately this time last year that was when I went through my I want to change my art style kind of phase and I feel like one year later here I am feeling the same kind of way I think that's just a me thing like I always feel like I want to change my art style and make it different so that's currently how I'm feeling right now and part of changing my art style for me is also just changing the way I color things and just doing everything differently so if you guys do see some changes in my future videos that's probably why And now for the magical particles flowing around the character, I kind of wanted to create like a blobby kind of effect and I used this peony color for blending and it kind of is purple, I mean, if you think about it, but then don't worry guys, it doesn't stay this way anyways. I did spend a lot of time drawing the circles, coloring around them, blending inside them, and after all that hard work, I realized that I just did not like how it turned out. But you know what? It's okay. It's part of the process. So this peony color won't stay because I decided to grab some colored pencils from Artex and I decided to go over them. So I used this purple color just to roughly go over all the areas with this color. And then I picked out just a lighter pencil to add lines just to show the motion of the magic kind of flowing around her. And of course, no magical illustration can be complete without magical metallic watercolors. These are so shiny and so pretty i got them i think about exactly a year ago i could be wrong but i think i did get them a year ago and they just are so magical and beautiful and now it's just time to cover up all the magical parts with this metallic watercolor And then I decided to grab my wonderful normal watercolor paints and I decided to add just like a drop of the glittery watercolor in it and then I kind of created this like light pinkish purple color which I used to color in the background and that kind of just helped pull this entire piece together and it just made everything look so much better. And now finally it's time for the white gel pen highlights and with that signing it off because now it's time officially for the grand reveal. Anyways guys, here's how the drawing turned out. There are so many small details in this and I really love how it turned out, especially since I just thought of it on the spot. And it just, again, I just had this really nice connection with this drawing and I love how it looks. I feel like I could have blended the face out a bit better, but you know what? That's okay. I still love it. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous day. Stay awesome as always and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye Magical Sparks!